What's up guys? Welcome back. Daniel Bailey here and today we are training legs. We got some friends in town. I'm gonna keep it a little more basic, but it's gonna kick your butt. We'll go over some tips along the way, but we're doing a full leg day workout. Let's get it done. All right, starting off, I like to start with a nice heavy squat. Um, as you're watching, I know a lot of people ask like, oh, why is your head down? And why is the bar so low on your back? And what are those shoes for? So instead of wasting your time, go make sure you check out the video. Uh, it's me and my friend Bonnie, and we go over high bar versus low bar and which one to pick and why. So I am going to, I do low bar because I am stronger at it. Um, and I want to go a little bit heavier. So today we are squatting. I generally like to do my squatting a little bit heavier. So we're going to keep our rep range around five to six reps. So I'm still on my warm up sets. It takes me about four sets to get up to. Um, I usually start around like, I'll start probably at 65% and then work my way at 65, 70% for five to six reps. So I won't start counting those sets until I get there. So this is still warm up, but definitely if you don't know the difference between high bar or low bar, or maybe you're confused which one you should be doing, make sure to go check that out and then start squatting. When you squat, whether it's a squat, deadlift, or bench, those two, those three main movements, I think it's so important to have a setup. Um, I talked about being like like a basketball player, and you get fouled, you do a foul shot, and everyone that practices foul shots, they always practice the same way. Like I, I still remember mine. Mine was dribble, 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 spin, dribble, 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 spin, and then I would get set, and then right into it, and I did it the same every single time and that's the same thing that you need to do on these bigger movements is take it seriously no matter if it's a warm-up set or your heaviest set they should all your setup should look exactly the same every single time and i know like if i do something if i like step out wrong i literally will re-rack the weight take a step back because this is something like when you are going heavier and you're in that range where you're only doing five or six reps or something, that is like you have to take that serious. So practicing a good setup. And if you watch all of my videos, my, my squats look exactly the same. My bench looks exactly the same. And I don't deadlift a whole lot, but that looks exactly the same too. So figure out like a good setup where you come in, lock those shoulders right into place, lock your lats into place. I do a one, two, get my feet in position, drop my head, and then I'm in it. And if you do the same thing every single time, you have the same setup every single time, you'll know when you're gonna get a squat and when you're not. Because if you, you come out alignment, yeah, just, you're not gonna get it. So get your head right. And another thing to get your head right, like today, right now this feels heavy and uh i think it's important to just like make people realize that not every day is going to be your strongest so like four or five days ago we were all training here uh and everyone was here and i hit 255 for five or six and i'm doing five or six reps again and this 225 feels very very heavy now even though i have done 255 for five or six reps if it does if this feels like enough like stay there don't go up there's so many factors that go into like whether it's a good lit like if you're going to feel strong that day or not strong that day whether it's sleep uh, what time of day what food you ate what mood you're in is all going to determine like your weights and you know that like sometimes like you're doing lateral raises and uh 40s feel amazing and then you come back and like you 30s feel like those 40s or 50s like it just happens and i think it's important to realize like not every day is going to be your strongest and you need to just realize that and not push yourself 
into doing weights that might have felt great last week, they might not feel great this week. And it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean you're going backwards. It does not mean that you're losing muscle or you're losing strength. It just means, okay, I'm just not stronger that day. So I think this is good. So instead of doing 255 today, I might just do like 235. I might just add fives. And like other sets might feel better. So if, if this next set feels great, maybe then I can add. If it doesn't feel great, maybe I take off. So that's also important. It's just like keeping control of that mindset. So good setup and keep control of your mindset. Not every day is gonna be the best. So you do the best you can for whatever day that is. Guys, my hair is getting crazy right now. So, next up, I love to just set things. Obviously, if you've been following me for a very long time, you know that I typically don't really just do one exercise at a time. Not that that's bad. One, I like to do it because it saves time. Two, I also like to do it because you don't have to go as heavy on things. Um, so, we're gonna do a quad focus tri set. The order, doesn't necessarily matter versus because uh, I, I couldn't decide I was like should I do a leg extension and then a leg press so the three exercises are a leg press then you go directly to a leg extension then you go directly to a sissy squat the sissy squat we're not doing any weight because I want you to do at least the sissy squat at the end so whether you do the extensions first or the leg press first it doesn't really matter so I'm gonna go leg press two extensions to a sissy squat, which is gonna make those sissy squats really, really hard. Now, if you are at a public gym and that is not possible, which I understand, it is very hard. We used to work at a, out at a Gold's and if you're on an extension and you leave that thing for two seconds, boom, it's gone. So you just split them up. It's not a big deal. You don't have to do it exactly like this. I just really enjoy that because it saves time. So if you have the ability to do that, totally saves time. Um, and you can also start however you want. Um, I, I normally start with leg extensions before going to like a leg press because then you don't have to go as heavy. It's like a pre-exhaust. Um, but I'm going to start with that. We're going for a little bit higher rep range on these guys. So we're going to go to like a 12 to 15 rep range for everything. So again, give or take, if you want to go a little heavier on the leg press, Go for it, man. Um, leg press, we're going feet low. So on every leg press, well, I can't say on every one, but generally most leg presses are gonna have like this little, uh, well, it definitely has a platform, but usually we'll have like a little kink in the middle. Um, since this is a quad focus, ooh, someone with long legs was on here. Oh, I need to move it down. Move this thing down. Uh, since we're going a little more quad focus, we're gonna keep our feet a little bit lower. I don't actually like them all the way down. Um, just a little bit too much emphasis on my knees. So I go a little more narrow, like shoulder width to a little bit more uh, narrow than your shoulders. Feet slightly pointed out. And I'm going middle to lower portion. If we were doing more of a hamstring or a glute, our feet would be kind of above that line. And I kind of still do the same thing. Uh, feet are usually shoulder width, uh, toes pointed out slightly. So because we're doing a quad focus, we want to get those quads a little bit more. Feet are going to be lower. So wh why does it hit your quads more when your feet are low? It's because you're going to have more knee flexion. Higher up, less knee flexion. So you hit that posterior chain. Uh, so we're going lower, feet slightly out. And again, this is one of those exercises that people like to put way too much weight on the leg press. And they start doing, and I, I don't even know if I can do it, but this is not a leg press. That is called a knee press. <laughs> or I don't even know, like a patella press. I want you getting all the way down as far as you can and then all the way back up. So less of this so oh less weight less of this 
more all the way down really hit those quads and keep it on the lighter side so feet lower pointed out less weight we don't care how much no one's watching no one's at the gym saying like oh my god look how many plates they have on that like no one cares no one's actually looking at you so take the weight off and do better form get more range of motion you'll get more out of it so after we get about 12 or so 12 to 15 so again 12 to 15 that's high reps we're gonna go i'm gonna go directly to leg extensions so now that i kind of exhausted my legs a little bit my quads a little bit i, I won't have to go as heavy on this but we're also gonna go 12 to 15 on here Dun, dun, dun. how you the way your feet are turned is completely up to you uh i can show it without so if your feet are straight that's going to hit basically nice good even portion of inner and outer inner and outer toes out you're going to get more of that inside toes in you're going to get more of that sweep outer side so if it's something that you want to work on maybe you want to get more of that outer lateral quad then face your toes in if you want to hit more of that inside maybe this little teardrop right here that medial head then toes out if you don't know <laughs> just stay straight or do a little bit of both you can do six in six out or maybe each uh, set you switch like i'm gonna do two sets this way two sets that way that's cool man get the best of both worlds so I generally will do uh, straight to slightly in. I like to work on that lateral head because I have really overdeveloped <laughs> medial uh, heads here. Just way overdeveloped from years and years of soccer. So I generally never point my toes out because I don't, I don't need any more. Uh, so I will usually go in or straight. Again, 12 to 15 range. Whoa, this seat is really far back. Again, this is something that control is very important. So not swinging the weight up. Uh, it's a little heavy, so it's not going to pop off. If that, if the weight, hi, yeah. look how cute she is in her little t-shirt. If the weight, if this pad actually comes off of your shin, slow it down. So I usually do a two second up, two second down with like a pause, a little one second pause. Just slow your reps down um, instead of just flinging it up and letting it bring it down. So one, two, up, hold, one, two, down. I should have probably did a little less weight. Someone was on here first. One, two, up, one, two, down. And I also don't let the weight go all the way down. I like to keep that tension on it the entire time. So actually, I'm gonna take a little bit of weight off because I can't, I can't demonstrate when it's really heavy not ready for that yet so obviously ours is plate loaded uh machine ones are also just as good so what i'm talking about uh not letting it come all the way down this is where i usually stop there's already tension on my quads so yeah you're coming down you're just not doing this where you lose complete tension i feel that anytime you take tension completely off you're going to strain that's where you're going to start like straining muscles here so i don't want to like strain my knee muscles my knee muscles my tendons you don't really have you don't have knee muscles believe it or not you have knee, muscles around your knee so one two up one two down i stop before it gets there don't lose tension up hold and back down so 12 to 15 there and then we'll go directly and we're going to do assisted i'm gonna go on this side assisted sissy squat so sissy squat means your toes or your knees are gonna go completely in front of your toes so believe it or not that's not a bad thing it's not it's not a bad thing for your knees to go in front of your toes so we're gonna go about a shoulder width stance i'm gonna just hold on to this uh just so i because after leg extension and that, or leg press to leg extension, 
this is gonna be a lot harder. So I like to just balance myself. You're not pulling yourself up. So the first part of the movement is gonna start with your knees. So your knees are gonna break and they're already gonna be in front of your toes. I know, you gotta get over the fact that that's actually allowed. Your body kind of hinges back, your knees come forward, and you're gonna go as low as you can to the ground, and then up. And I stay pretty much on my toes the whole entire time. This, you're gonna be on your toes. This is a quad emphasis work, uh, quad emphasis triset. So, knees in front of the toes, and then let your body like kind of hinge back. So you're here and then up. And then I stay in that back position. You're not fully extending all the way up. Keep that tension on, lean your upper torso back, let your knees fall to the ground, and then you're, you're pushing up with your quads. This is a, pretty much an all quad movement here. And then keep that torso leaning back. If it helps to hold front ways, this isn't a heavy enough uh, rubber band, but you could even grab someone's hands and let yourself lean back. If I had a heavier band, you might be able to do this. So, nope, not, not heavy enough. Then when you get good, I'm gonna show off for a second. I've been practicing these with Dan. <sighs> then when you get good, balance will come into play Oh, that was a bad one. That was a bad one. Guys, I know I can do this. I'm just not warmed up. Not warmed up. Not warmed up. There we go. Oh, it's so much easier. Just <laughs> all you got to do, find a little pole. Don't pull yourself up. This is just basically hold and you're just going to slide your hand down. Just helps with a little bit of balance. So that is the tri set. Whether you split it up or not, it's up to you. I'm gonna keep it together. Four rounds, 12 to 15 reps of each exercise. better with the natural light oh, hopefully <laughs> all right so now we're gonna move on to a little hamstring triset again if you don't have the availability of using two different machines at the same time not a big deal uh, the first part of the triset is gonna be on the same machine so we're gonna be on this little power squat hack squat it's called a V squat or power squat uh, you will be able to do this on a regular hack squat as well. Um, this one is just a little bit better because we have the little angled version. This is, I generally only use this machine facing the opposite way. So we are going to be targeting it. Target, 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 me, targeting, targeting, targeting. <laughs> I can't, my God. Targeting our posterior part of our leg hamstrings and glutes so we're going to start off with a hack squat or v squat good morning so good morning you've done these so if you don't have one of these you can just do it with a barbell you'll be placing the barbell on your back and you're just sending those hips back and then bringing them forward squeezing your hamstrings and glutes we're going to be doing the same thing on this the second part we're then going to add into just a reverse squat. So you should be able to not have to change the weight and just go right into the next one uh, because you're gonna go as heavy as you can for the, the good mornings and you should be able to keep the same weight and go right into the reverse. So good mornings on a V squat. So we're gonna be in here, putting our shoulder blades into the pad here. Let's get that off. I, walk, I like my feet pretty far back. We're gonna have our knees somewhat bent. And then the movement is gonna start with hinging at our hips. And that will also be the first part of the movement when we do the reverse squat. 
So just practice like letting your hips go back. And that's the only part of the movement you really, really need. Uh, your knees aren't really going to bend or straighten for this first part. You keep them slightly bent and they stay that way the whole entire time. So hinge at hips, let that butt draw back. And then once you get here in a nice squeeze position, you're gonna squeeze up, squeeze those hamstrings, squeeze the butt, hips forward. But then don't straighten your knees out. I know you can't really tell because I have knee sleeves on, but they're gonna stay slightly bent that whole entire time. So send that butt back, keep your back nice and flat. And it's nice on this, I guess I can show you because you won't be able to see my back. Your back is gonna stay flat. So you're not rounding. If you need to use a, if you don't have this machine and you're using a barbell, you gotta keep your back flat that whole entire time and then squeeze up. So this is basically the movement. Just let your butt drift out, squeeze your butt on the way back up and then back stays super flat. And then we're gonna go into a reverse squat. You're gonna start that same way your, I guess I have to demonstrate on this, but the movement's gonna start with your hips. Generally, a squat starts with your knees bending. Your knees bend and then your body comes down. We're going to start with a hinge at our hips. So our hips are gonna go back, sending that butt back, but then we're gonna bend into it, which you should be stronger because now we're using our legs, and then up, squeeze forward. So hinge at hips, let the butt come back. So it's like a, like an angled low bar squat, except we're on the machine. So it keeps you in very good form. So with the machine, again, feet are about the same shoulder width, toes slightly pointed out, hold wherever you need to. Knees always stay slightly bent so that you have a little bit of tension on your legs. And you don't ever wanna like lock your knees out um, and like send your knee calves backwards. You don't want to hyperextend your knees. So knees always stay slightly bent. First part of the movement is going to start here. So hips go back and then you're going to go into a squat from there. So hips go back, butt comes back into a squat and up. So I'll try to do the motion like pretty in slow motion so that you can see what moves first so if you come directly at a like side view you'll be able to see what comes first so we're in our starting position butt comes back then i squat down and up butt comes back squat hips forward so we'll stick to a 10 to 12 range 10 to 12 with the good mornings most likely not have to switch the weight and then go right into your reverse hack. And if it's open, so I can save some time, I'm gonna go directly to a lying leg press. Whoa! Then we'll go directly into a lying leg curl. Words are hard today. You're gonna go light because we just did good mornings, we just did a reverse hack, and now this, we're already exhausted. So this is more just that toning. So again, 10 to 12, you can do a little bit higher range if, if you're doing a really lightweight. And big thing here, since we're going, oh, somebody tall was on here. Uh, a good key to knowing how, uh, if you're doing too much weight is when your butt is completely up out of the air and your hips aren't down. So a good way to not do that is elevate your chest. So as you come up there's no way your hips can come up because when you're down here and the weight gets heavy a lot of times we'll do this little little thing and our hips are off the pad so elevate your chest and when you come up there's literally no way they can come up off the pad because your chest is up sending them down so if you have a problem with your hips coming up one, lighten the weight. Two, elevate your chest. So again, these are nice and controlled, just like our extensions. So one, two, up, maybe squeeze for a second, back down. Toe placement is up to you if you wanna have your toes out. 
I think having your toes out hits like your like the outside of your glutes pretty good. So I kind of like that because um, I can already feel them tensed up. So I like working that lateral lateral head of the glute. If you just want more just straight hamstrings, keep your feet uh, straight. And then in, in is going to get actually that inner thigh, which I don't need to work that. I like, I want to work my booty a little bit more. So I'm going to actually have my, my feet angled out a little bit. Right here at the top. Boom. It's hitting right here. And then obviously my hamstrings. And that is your tricep. So three to four rounds of that. 10 to 12 reps of each exercise. And then we're almost done. I was actually gonna throw something else in there, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Whoo! So, headed up, starting different exercises. If you can do the triceps, whoo, you'll be winded like this. So, this was a quick, easy, you should be able to get this workout done in about an hour, unless you take your time like I do with my squat. So, but everything else, if you can keep that rest time pretty low, you can get a little more cardio, a little hyperventilation going on. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's just a basic leg day and it kicked my butt. I'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna go lay down. Woo! Get you all set, ready to go. Oh, wow. Oh wow, well, Kat. <laughs> She's just like, what are you doing? She's like, Mom, you yeah. want Mom. Oh, we wear the same belt. We wear the same size. Okay, can you sit up on a bench with me and Dana?